So recently, my wife and I purchased a new car, which we're gonna talk about here in just a second. But in this video, I have a few tips, maybe three to five tips to help you purchase a new vehicle and save a lot of money in the process. So on our car purchase, we saved easily a good 10% on the purchase price or more, saving a total of $2,000. And the best part was, is we didn't even have to leave our house to do it. We did it all over the internet and with a, using a phone. And that's coming up right now. Welcome back to Money and Life TV. What is up guys? How's my YouTube family doing out there? Hope everybody's doing great. In today's video, Chipper and I have a few exciting tips for you when it comes to purchasing a car. If you've been following our videos for any period of time now, you probably know that for years and years, my wife and I drove a 1995 Ford Windstar. We called it the green machine. It saved us a lot of money in the process, but man, that thing, it finally was time for it to go. Okay, so now let's take a moment, let's talk about the process we use to purchase this new vehicle. And it's, after doing it this way, I will never buy a car ever again any other way. Because buying a car online was like so, so much easier. We had dealt with, a, we had gone to a different car lots and test drove a few cars. But beyond that, I will never walk straight into a dealership again of, uh, if I wanna buy a car. I will probably always do it online or over the phone. Just so you guys know, the tips I have to share with you today, that might not work exactly the same way for you. You might get a better deal, you might get a worse deal. But I think either way, you'll probably benefit from knowing these different tactics, or at least from hearing our story, before you go buy a new or used car. All right, let's dive into the first tip. Number one, the first thing I want you guys to do is to go online. In fact, when you go online, go to cars.com. I'm showing you the website right here and search the vehicle you want and find it. So the cars.com is a great resource because it will pull vehicles within a certain mile radius of, of your choosing. And so we, what we did is we chose a 200 mile radius, search for the vehicle we want, and voila, we found the vehicle we wanted. It was the color we wanted, everything. So now well, all we needed to do was make a phone call once we found the vehicle at the price we wanted because we had been searching for the price for some time, so we kind of knew what the average price was of a RAV4 in our area. At that point, we picked up the phone and we called the salesman. Hi, hi, yeah, um, so hi, my name is Mike and I'm actually looking on your website and I see that you have a RAV4, the, the, it's a charcoal gray one. Is, do you still have that on the lot? Is there is there anything else I should know about it? I mean, I looked at the vehicle history online. I mean, has it ever been in an accident? Does it have any defects or flaws that would need to be addressed? All right, so I see you have the car listed for right around 20,000. Tell you what, would would you be would you guys be willing to take 18,500 for the vehicle? At at that point, the internet sales manager, which was really reasonable by the way, he was very easy to talk to. He came back. He didn't want to accept my offer of 18,500. He countered back with an offer of 19,500, which basically means he took $500 off the purchase price of the vehicle. So my next move was to find out what's that gonna cost me? Okay, so you're saying 19,500 is the best you can do at this point in time. What would that be in total out the door? Like if you include your sales taxes on that, if you include like license and registration, all that kind of stuff, what would the total cost be for the vehicle out the door? So after asking for the total cost of the vehicle, the internet sales manager responds, basically saying that the car is gonna cost out the door with all the taxes and everything around $22,000 at that point. Right at that moment, I say, okay, well, let me discuss it with my wife and how about I give you a call back after, after we've had a, a chance to talk. And, you know, of course, he says that he can only hold the vehicle for one night, so we have to be serious about our purchase. And I said, okay, okay. I said, let me talk to my wife and we'll go from there. At that point, he also gives me his cell phone number. He says, hey, if you, for whatever reason, you can't get a hold of me through the main line, here, here's my cell phone number. You can communicate with me during, via text. And that was turned out to be extremely helpful because then I, we had the time to read his response and respond to it the way we wanted to respond to each of his text messages moving forward. So if you're in a situation like this, try to get the cell phone number or email of the internet sales manager you're trying to work with to purchase the vehicle you're trying to purchase. It makes communication way easier 
than trying to be on a live phone conversation with them. And the negotiation process is just so much simpler and less stressful after that. So my wife and I talked it over and me being a moron, me being a, a dum dumb, I had not transferred my money because we were planning to pay cash for this car in which we, we ended up doing paying cash, but I had not transferred the money from our online savings to our checking account yet. And so there was no way I had the cash available to buy this car. And there was no way we were gonna do a vehicle loan on, on the car either. So when my wife found out I didn't even have the funds available, she was ticked. And for a while I got the silent treatment, let's be honest. All of you probably know what the silent treatment is, it's no fun. <laughs> we would have almost bought the car for that price, but it's a good thing that my heir in not transferring money, it actually worked in our favor. I ended up calling back the sales manager and telling him, hey, look, thank you for talking to us and thank you for letting us know the details of this vehicle, but unfortunately our funds aren't quite ready yet, so I don't think there's any way we can come down there tonight and, and buy the vehicle. I said, we'll have to get our funds together and then maybe if the car's still around, if it's still on the lot in about a week or so from now, maybe we'll reconsider it at that point. So that was communicated all via text message. And at that point, I set my phone down and I walk away. My wife being kind of angry with me, I decided it'd probably be a good time for me to go outside. So I go outside and wash our existing cars. So during this time, apparently the sales manager had been texting me. And so after I come back in from washing my car, I realized he left me a couple text messages. The first one said, hey, don't worry if you don't have cash tonight, we can hold a personal check. I was like, oh, nice, okay. So not having the money really isn't an issue. And the second thing he texted me is, what price would you need the vehicle to be in order to get you in the door tonight? And once I saw that text message, I, I got kind of excited. So I talked it over with my wife, I said, hey, Look, I know you're mad at me about the money, but guess what? They can hold a personal check for us. And two, he wants to know what price we would accept to go to the dealership tonight. And so we texted him back. We said, hey, thank you very much to let us know about the check. We're really looking to spend only right around $20,000. Total off the door price, we're looking to spend right around $20,000. So he counters back and he says $20,650. And so he came down from about $22,000 to $20,650, which was a pretty significant price drop. At that point, I called him back up. Great, well, I know you, so you've offered us a very nice offer, and I, I appreciate it at $20,650. Tell you what, if you can give us the price of $20,500, we will be on our way right now to, pay, to buy the vehicle, because that is right around the price we're looking to spend. So we got off the phone with him, and we're kind of excited, and we're a little nervous too, because we were about to go have dinner, but instead, now we might be skipping dinner altogether and going straight for a drive about an hour and a half away from where we live to buy this $20,000 vehicle. So if I thought about it, it's like I'm spending $20,000 in like, what, five minutes? So he texts back and, and says, hey look, you know, I think we can get you down to $20,500, so, but you need to be here. So if, if you'll come tonight, I think we can get you that price. So long story short, we end up driving to that auto dealership and we meet the guy, extremely reasonable guy, very nice guy, and he didn't give us the $20,500 price, but he, so we ended up getting it for around $20,650. However, he gave us more value for our trade-in of the 95 Ford Windstar than we expected. It ended up reducing the total cost for our vehicle purchase to $20,088. Now, my goal was to spend right around 20,000, so we were super close to that and super happy. So bottom line, guys, is it really works out to, from my experience, and my sister-in-law did this as well, is to, if you're patient, if, if you have time, have the time to research vehicles online and see what's out there at these different dealerships. You can just do all the negotiation and the entire transaction basically over the phone so that when you walk in that dealership, you know what you're gonna pay out the door with no other negotiation needed. And you don't even have to leave your house. And that's what's wonderful about it. These are just some tips I wanted to share with you guys. And besides just being excited about buying this new vehicle, finally have a new vehicle. I, I no longer have the oldest car in the parking lot at work and the car runs great. I love it. And best of all, we paid cash. No car payment, nothing. It is ours. And second best of all, my insurance only went up 18 bucks a month. Thank God. Anyways, guys, I hope you found these tips helpful. I would love to hear 
in that comment section down below, in fact, do it right now, please, is let me know what negotiation tactics have worked well for you over the years when you're going to buy a vehicle, either at a dealership, a used car lot, wherever. Let us know, please let the viewers know what has worked for you. I'd love to hear your stories. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me here again on YouTube. I, I really love talking to you guys, and it means so much to me when you leave a comment, so please drop a comment down below. If you like the video, please let me know by hitting that like button. Share this information with a friend, especially somebody who's about to purchase a new car or, or who you know who will be buying a new car soon. I think these tips will help them out. Every single week on this channel, I make videos that cover finances, investing, taxes, and so much more. So be sure to subscribe if you have not already. And with that being said, it was awesome hanging out with you guys once again, as it always is. So I will see you all next week. Bye guys. Peace. Live life on cage.